Oh my god, what is this? Sega is using green hills again? Are you serious? This game is gonna suck! I hate Sega! All right, y'all. So we are officially winning. Frontiers Defense Squad, we need to tap in right now. We got a lot of Sonic Frontiers footage shown off today at the Nintendo Direct Mini. Was not expecting that. So let's just get into everything because there's a lot of info you probably missed. So we got our first look at what looks to be the ghost girl that we've all heard about. Her name is Sage. This is like the first villain from what it looks like. It says that she is a mysterious girl that appears across the Starfall Islands. Throughout the story, she cautions Sonic to leave the Starfall Islands despite his mission to find and save his friends. I gotta say, she looks kind of menacing and evil and she looks a little bit similar to infinite i wonder if there's a connection there we finally got some brand new cgi since this game was first unveiled and this looks sick this is giving me dark age sonic shonen sonic serious story vibes we get our first new look at the brand new villain in action we see this giant robot thing i don't know what it is but sonic also looks really good it looks like the stakes of this story have risen i am extremely excited if not for nothing that the story is finally going to be better than the meta era garbage that we have been getting but the main reason you guys are probably tapping into this video is because we finally got our first footage of cyberspace and if you guys look behind me it looks very good i gotta say it does look very interesting obviously you guys see green hill which like whatever green hills in a sonic game whoop de do but i will say though if you guys notice this does not look like a reused one of one asset from sonic generations it looks like it's original unique level design so we have to be pretty happy about that and look not for nothing we actually have a unique level if you guys look right here this looks like a brand new city that no one's ever seen before so this is very good news guys you cannot be upset about this cyberspace looks very interesting i'm not the biggest fan of the boost formula but we did not see any 2d we saw original level design and it looks like it will break up the pace of the open world a little bit so i am very happy about this and you should be too frontiers defense squad we are winning it doesn't matter if green hill is being reused because if you look in the sky it looks like it has that cyberspace theme to it it also does look appropriate to the plot like sonic does have amnesia so i'm not really too worried about it as long as the levels aren't reused which obviously it looks like they aren't this is not a big deal and like i said before there is that brand new city and some of the leaks have said that there might be around 28 cyberspace levels i can't confirm that yet but if a couple of them are reused assets and they're appropriate to the plot like does it really matter what truly matters is the level design not the aesthetic or the theme of the level because at the end of the day those are just textures imported into the level well yes i would have liked green hill not being in the game it's definitely not going to make or break my experience we also got some new key art so maybe this will be the box art it shows sonic running in the open world but it does look a little bit similar to sonic in the secret rings many people have pointed that out and not that we know much about the game but it feels like this is going to appeal to the dark age fans and maybe we'll finally see shonen sonic again i just have a feeling with the chaos emerald central to the plot again we're probably going to see super sonic in the story and this sage character looks like maybe we're going to have to reprogram her because if you guys remember the plot synopsis that leaked very long ago during the frontiers unveiled during the game awards it said that eggman did try to hack the ai sage so maybe she's evil after getting hacked but we will just have to see about that but the game is looking very promising and speaking of the story and more details about about that we did get some more information so a synopsis of the story says this sonic's new journey begins when him and his friends amy and tails head to the starfall islands in search of the chaos emeralds as they approach the island sudden trouble hits their plane and they are sucked into a dimensional portal sonic then finds himself separated from his friends and awakens in a strange digital world cyberspace he miraculously escapes cyberspace and arrives on chronos islands one of the starfall islands full of ancient ruins where strange enemies roam it is then set up for sonic to explore the starfall island find his lost friends and uncover the mysteries around him we also got some additional details about the starfall islands it says the first island sonic explores is called chronos island that sounds like a world of warcraft name it's terrain and climate sees frequent rain large waterfalls lush forests mountains and floating towers in the air the ruins scattered around the island appear to be the homes of ancient inhabitants the coco and the last thing it says is the entrances to cyberspace made by the ancient civilization of starfall islands can be found all throughout the map sonic fans will solve puzzles and complete challenges to earn portal gears to unlock these entrances to cyberspace featuring traditional fast-paced speed running action platforming they'll need to complete the challenges in each cyberspace level to receive vault keys to progress further in the game yeah i mean looks really good i mean while we don't know everything about the story seems like we have some new important details like we finally got the new villain or antagonist revealed from what it looks like and once again it looks like they are going for that sense of mystery for the story but doesn't it just seem like we're returning to that serious style of sonic story i love games like 
SA2, 06, Unleashed, SA1. One of the biggest things about those games were they had serious stories. So like we need to get back to that Shonen Sonic and I cannot wait to hear more about the story. Right now we're in breadcrumb season, but it's all good. And we've only been revealed the first island. There should be at least four. So like I said, there's a lot about this game we don't know yet, but it looks like everything is looking more and more promising with each info drop. This probably is the footage that we should have gotten first. Like I think we can all agree that Sega's marketing is really not helping this game at all, but it's all good. There's a lot more information we still have to go into. So let's continue. We got a little bit more gameplay information as well. It talks about the Psy Loop, which has Sonic learns a new ability called the Psy Loop, creating a band of light mirroring Sonic's tracks, surrounds enemies, items, and areas to uncover its various effects and unlock the secrets of the Starfall Islands. It talks about the puzzles. It says there are various puzzles to solve throughout the ancient ruins of the Starfall Islands. Completing each puzzle can grant items to increase Sonic's power and defense, reveal hidden parts of the map, and unlock new ways to navigate the island at fast speeds. They also went into detail about some of the gameplay styles. They said when you first start the game, you choose between two player control styles, action style and high speed style. Action style helps a more accurate platforming, great for new players to Sonic games. High speed style offers more speed, great for players used to Sonic titles. So I actually don't know what that means. Like, what if I want accurate platforming and high speed? Like, can I do both of that? I told you guys in a previous video that there's going to be like adjustable sliders. So maybe you can kind of mix and match between the two gameplay styles. I would hate to have to choose between like accurate platforming and high speed in a high speed platform. You know what I mean? I think we should be able to get the best of both worlds. But I do like that they're giving people control and they're going to appeal to new and more experienced players, I guess. So I'll have to figure that out as they reveal more information. But let's continue. This is actually a very interesting tidbit about the battle system, which might be similar to like the action and high speed platforming options you have. It says here's the battle system. Players can use various button controls to fight strategically, combining moves such as dodges, parries, counters, and more in various combos to show off battle skills unlocked throughout the game. But here's where it gets interesting. It says if you perform more straightforward gameplay, the game also has an auto mode where various attack combos can be executed with a single button. So they have like an easy mode and a hard mode. If you want to start getting crazy with your punch combos, you can do that. If you want to just homing attack into people like you always have, you could probably do that as well. Nothing wrong with giving people more control, like more varying degrees of difficulty and freedom, because that's what a Sonic game should be about, right? So I do like that. I think, you know, it doesn't hurt the game. The last thing that was unveiled was the name for all the enemies. So why don't we go into that? Because it's more information relevant to the game. We have the soldier. This enemy spawns in groups and attacks with jabbing motions in both hands. We have the cyclone, a floating enemy causing damage with attacks that appear as electric tornadoes. We have banger, a wheel like enemy that rushes towards Sonic once he's detected and attacks at high speeds if provoked. We have shell, an enemy protected by a hard shell that attacks at a distance with a boomerang type move. Sonic's attacks cannot penetrate the hard shell, but other methods such as the side loop can catch this enemy off guard. We have bubble, an enemy formed by a group of spheres that attack Sonic with electricity. We have ninja, an enemy with high speed attacks reminiscent of the fighting style of its namesake, can block incoming attacks and strike with the shadows of itself. We have tower, an enemy composed of various stacked parts. Its weakness is at the top of its head, so Sonic will need to figure out how to destroy each stack to get to it. And we have Asura, who everyone has been talking about, a large enemy that looks like a tall building. Run up the arm it throws down and find its weakness at the top and attack. So I like these enemies. These are brand new. These aren't the typical Eggman robots. It's nice to see that we're going to get some variation in the enemies we've seen for the first time in a very long time. So yeah, like I said, Sonic Frontier's Defense Squad, we are winning. Everything that's been coming out about this game has been looking better and better. I will say, I think most people can admit that the haters probably jumped on this a little too early in terms of like their criticism of the game. Not to say that you can't criticize the game. Like you should be vocal to Sega about some of the things that you don't like because I don't think it's a perfect game. There's definitely some things that I have concerns with. But overall, I think we should be a little bit less critical of the game because like I said, a lot of good stuff's coming out. But yeah, guys, that's everything new that you might have missed from the first gameplay trailer because a lot of information came out. Let me know what you guys think about it. Stop what you're doing and smash that like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. I don't really have anything else to say to you guys. I would love to see what you guys have to say about all this information. So until I see you next time, peace out.